everything that we do, we want to be the best at it, right? Is that uh, even studying, like if I'm studying with the, I want to be the best at studying, right? If I'm uh, doing a project with uh, Miss Camille, who, who's helping me and she's been through the STEM exposure camp, I want to be the best at it with her. So whether, what, like I said, whether it's in sports, um, whether it's being a firefighter, or uh, whether it's being a teacher or a counselor, we want to be the best at it. And that's why I'm, I'm excited to talk to you guys about the STEM exposure camp, because you have a few weeks where collectively y'all get together and y'all have the opportunity to be the best at something, right? And you're not competing. You're not competing against your classmates. You're not competing against uh, the counselors. You're competing against yourself. People can't make substitutions for greatness. Like if you're average, they can always find somebody uh, that can do the same thing that you do and be average like you. But when you strive for excellence, when you, when you strive for, for greatness, uh, you have no choice but to stand out like a sore thumb because it's engraved in you. It's because you have a unique purpose. It's because you are young kings and queens and God has given you the ability that he hasn't given to anyone else. It's extremely freeing, like I was saying before, just to be able to live, to pay for the things that you own, to, to own them outright. Um, and then it really sets you up to be able to start putting your money into things that are actually going to make you money so that you can get to a point that you don't have to spend eight, nine, ten hours of your day every single day working just to provide. Um, and he mentioned like freeing you mentally, but it's also going to free you like literally like you're going to have so much money that you were paying these people that you owed on like to just do what you want with your money. And I think on the surface level, um, I think the hardest part is it's just getting beyond the perception of others and what other people think about you. Because like on the surface, if you just looked at us, people would just think, oh, wow, like what? They live in a tiny house. I don't want to do that. That's a small space. They don't have this. They don't have that. But in reality, the money that we're saving right now by living this lifestyle, we're basically making a temporary sacrifice for our long, long term because we're able to set aside cash and really begin to build our wealth now that we're debt free and living with no payments um, to the point that in the future, our plan is to actually open up our own community of tiny houses where we'll buy our own plot of land. We rent out to people on a short term basis that just want to try it rent it out to people on a long-term basis. So while we're on vacation or while we're traveling or while we're spending time with family, we have this property already set in place and it, and it brings in an income that we don't have to go out and trade our time for. That's how you really begin to build wealth is by acquiring assets that make money for you. What's, What's up, up YouTube? YouTube? It's your boy Mari, and I'm here with my beautiful wife. Co-Nasa. And this morning we got the opportunity to speak with a group of high school students that's actually going to be building a tiny house of their own this summer. And it was so much fun, y'all. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was really cool. We uh, It was a little tough because we actually had to speak behind NFL quarterback Jameis Winston. Um, so that was really fun for us. He was super excited. I was. Uh, we were actually expecting him to be on behind us. And so then when we logged into Zoom and he was already on there, I was like, that's Jameis Winston. So I know the kids had to be excited because I'm a grown man and I was excited. So that was pretty cool as well. So two reasons why we're sharing this video. Number one, um, the program that these kids are involved in is a STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And we think it is an amazing cause. It's, it's pretty special what they're doing down there. We're gonna give you some more information about that here in just a second. So we wanted people to be able to, to find them and wanted to kind of shed some light on the program so that if people wanted to donate, they could. And number two, a lot of new subscribers, you guys have found us out there recently. And the video, it's like a short five minute video that we're gonna play for you here in a second. But the video we put together for the students to see before we went on and did the live Q and A, it's actually a really good video for like just basically showcasing us and who we are, what we're all about, what we're doing. And so we thought that that would be really cool for new people that have found the channel to get to know us a little bit better as well. Yes, and if you're new, welcome. We're so happy you're here. And if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to smash the like button. So before we jump into this video, we just wanted to share with you a little bit more about the program. Robin Donaldson is actually the director of the STEM Exposure Camp, and she created this program to expose the kids in her community, the minority kids, to STEM careers. So um, kind of getting their feet wet early on um, to help them out 
for the future. These students from third grade all the way to high school age actually get to um, learn how to design architectural structures and they get to actually build different things and this summer they'll be building a tiny house like Marie said so we are very excited about um, being involved in that and it's actually based out of Tampa Florida which we are super excited about because we came from Florida recently and we're we know all about the Florida lifestyle and we're loving it. It was also pretty cool because there were some other people within the tiny house movement that we know that were also a part of the camp or will be a part of the camp this week including Zach Giffen who you've probably seen on the TV show Tiny House Nation Alexis and Christian from Tiny House Expedition, um, Miss Jewel Pearson, also known or better known as uh, Miss Gypsy Soul. So that was cool too. So we're going to play our part and go through some of our live Q&A. And we hope you guys enjoy this uh, bit of a shake up, bit of a different video from us. Hey guys, my name is Maurique and I'm here with my beautiful wife of six years. Coat Nasa, and we're probably most known from our YouTube channel, Living Tiny with the Bushes, and we are 28 years old. Yeah, when we first decided to go tiny, it was back in 2017 when we were still living in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, since that time, we've actually moved to Texas, so you can see how flexibility was a big part of our decision. But today, we just want to share with you some of the other reasons we decided to go tiny. We're going to share a little bit of our home. We're going to give you a bit of a tour and uh, super, super excited to get to share and expose you guys to some new ideas. Yeah, and we're so excited to be here with y'all today. We will be on a little bit um, after this video in a live Q&A. So save up those good questions to ask us after this video. So first and foremost, we think you guys are in an amazingly unique and advantageous situation just to be learning about these things and thinking about these things early, early on. Um, and just to have that building experience, it is so unbelievably life-changing to be able to do things for yourself, to be able to live a sustainable lifestyle, to be able to do some of your own labor and save yourself so much money in the process. You guys can save tens of thousands of dollars by building your own homes, whether they're tiny homes or large homes. So we think that's absolutely incredible and wanna encourage you even more um, down that path. Yeah, so we'll quickly share some of the reasons and then we'll jump into the main reason why we want to um, we went into tiny living. So like we stated before, flexibility was a really big factor in us choosing to go tiny as well as ownership. Um, and then the reason why we want to talk to you most about today is actually the future rental value. So the financial piece of it was big for us. Um, when we first started um, thinking about tiny house, we had just decided to get out of debt. We spent two years working on getting rid of $125,000 of debt, including our tiny home. And with that in mind, we decided, okay, if we are able to pay off this tiny house, then we'll in the future own it and also be able to rent it out when we no longer want to live in it. Now for y'all, you're young. You can actually start way ahead of us like yeah. we worked really hard for two years to get out of debt you don't have to go through that bottle you just have to be intentional about how you're living and spending your money and saving your money now so that in the future you're able to outright buy something or not go in as much debt as we did we've made a lot of changes that have changed the direction of our life but we're basically trying to give you guys the blueprint that you don't even have to go down that path. We're not here to say that tiny living is the only way to live, but it's living with an intentional mindset, understanding your decisions and how they impact your future. Even if you're getting ready to um, think about college and you wanna think about, well, how am I gonna pay for that? Start saving some money for that. Go talk to your counselor and figure out some scholarships that you can actually use to pay your way through school. You know, grades are important sports, music, whatever it is, extracurricular activities can actually pay off for college. So think about those things early on. That way you can go to school for free or just have not as much debt as most people do. Yeah. And 
we also want to tell you why we chose the type of house that we chose. Yeah. So our house is actually 24 foot long and it's a little bit smaller than what you'll normally see. And we decided to do that because we wanted to stay at a certain budget. We had to be really creative to figure out how we would keep everything in this house that we really, really wanted in such a small space. The use of vertical space was huge. So instead of going 32 feet and keeping our bedroom downstairs, we decided to shrink it down, go 24, and use the space directly above our heads right now for where we sleep. We went with wood countertops versus granite or quartz or all of the fancy upgrades that you can go into. So there's a million different ways to design it, whether you're talking a tiny home or a traditional home um, we just went into it with the perspective that if this is ultimately going to be a, a rental property for us an income property for us we want to keep our initial investment low so that we can get our money back out of it that much faster yes whether you're thinking about how you're going to design this tiny house this summer or in the future designing your own home or building your own home hopefully um, all those things you can keep in, in mind to keep your costs down yeah we spent fifty five thousand dollars for this house but building it on your own, you should be able to do that for probably a third of the cost. So hopefully some of this information was beneficial to you and maybe you'll be able to use it down the line in the future sometime. Um, but we're gonna jump into the fun part of the video and we're gonna answer some of your questions live. That's awesome, thank you so much. Everybody give them a round of applause. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Surprisingly, no, we don't. People, that's a very popular question. People are always like, don't y'all get tired of it? Like, what do y'all do? It's so small. Um, he's 6'5", and he's fine in it. I mean, I'm fine, but he's really okay in it. So the way we designed this specifically was so that he didn't have to duck in the kitchen. So he wanted to make sure that you can walk and not have to think about hitting your head, but also um, maximizing the loft space. So the loft space that's right above us, I mean, we both have to like duck to get in there, but we're sleeping in there, so it's fine. So we actually don't really feel like we're running out of space. And now that we've added our deck on top of it, it creates even more space for us to hang out. And being in a warm weather, warmer weather state, we can be, you know, on the patio and hanging out or in the house and kind of switching it up a little bit. But no, we're not tired of it. We enjoy it a lot. Okay, besides your bed, was there any like space like um we had to like double up the purpose for? Um I really don't think so yeah. other than the couch. So like her so usually you would have like your clothes in a chest of drawers. Um, but her clothes are actually under our couch. We have these small little totes. And I think you probably saw that in the video where she just pulls the tote out and flips the lid up and all of her clothes storage is underneath of there. Um, that's another duplicate of space. And everything else is pretty normal. We do have a closet. Um, that was also in the video that's basically up and to the right. So we have like our, our main level closet. And then there's another one that we use like a bar stool or a little step ladder to step up to to get to additional hanging clothes. Yeah. So when the builders gave you the sheet of paper where they asked you what do you want when making your house, what was the hardest part when choosing what you wanted? Um, I So for me, I was just focused on my kitchen. I love to cook. Um, that was my biggest concern. I was actually, he did some convincing to me to tell me, like to ask me, like, what do you want? Like, we wanted, to, I want to go tiny. Like, I want you to be on board. Like, what would make you happy with our tiny house? And my only request was, as long as my kitchen is big enough for me to cook meals in, I'm okay. So, that was probably the hot, hardest thing for us to try to figure out was how do we keep as much counter space um, and as, like, a large of a kitchen and still have functional space elsewhere for us. I mean, one question I had and. It seems like you did a lot of uh, research, and this is a very intentional process you went through to minimize um, your possessions and minimize how much you're spending on uh, your cost of living. Did you talk to the kids a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys probably don't have any experience with it yet, um, and, you sh and, and it would be our it would be our duty to basically encourage you to stay away from debt as much as possible. Um, it is a burden. And in our country, we live sort of, I mean, essentially above our means a little bit. Um, and so one of our biggest messages is just, you know, there's there's so much of a weight on your shoulders when you owe 
oh this person that and oh this person that and oh this person that if you can avoid that um, you're going to be years ahead of your peers years ahead of others and it's really going to free you mentally um, you know sometimes we don't really realize how much weight is on our shoulders or how much of a burden something is on us until we lift it off and so when we decided that we were going to um, get serious about our finances and get serious about paying off debt it was a very difficult process it was a two-year process where we were doing nothing but working like crazy in and out in and out um you know the the house was really just kind of like our place to come recharge catch a little bit of sleep get something to eat and then we were back out the door to work uh, but we kind of put ourselves through that by putting ourselves into that debt so um there's a sometimes a lot of pressure with social media and different things like that to look a certain way or have these clothes or have these shoes or have this type of car um, and we're just saying it doesn't have to be that way. 